Hi, I'm Ricky, and I'm a science teller. A science teller is part scientist, part story teller. That's right, when you mix them together, you get a science teller. And that's someone who uses really cool experiments to tell an amazing story. That's right. You guys have been good at this. Today's story is called Dragons, Return of the Ice Sorceress. Let's get started. A long, long, long time ago, there was a kingdom. In this kingdom, there was a castle. In this castle, there were two kids. Their names were Henry and Beth. Henry and Beth, however, were not supposed to be in the castle. But one of their favorite things to do was to sneak into places where they shouldn't be. Suddenly, they heard voices. Someone was coming. They started to run. They ran down the hall and wham, crashed into someone. They looked up thinking that it might be the castle guard, but they were wrong. It wasn't the castle guard at all. It was the last person they wanted to run into. Freeze, what are you doing in my castle? You two are in big trouble. Now come with me. Before the king could grab them, Henry and Beth ran, pushing past the king, ran down another long hall, and ran outside. Woo! That was a close call. Henry and Beth started running back to the village. They were almost home when suddenly, look out! They dove to the ground just in time as something flew through the air right over their heads and disappeared into the forest. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! <clears throat> In the story, Henry and Beth saw something flying above their heads. Would you like to see what it looked like? Right here, I have a cooler. Inside this cooler, I have... Whoa! <laughs> Something cold. It's so cold, I have to wear these gloves in order to touch it. In this cooler, I have dry ice. Now, is dry ice hot or cold? Oh. It's cold. It's so cold, it's 109 degrees below zero. And that's why I have to wear these gloves in order to touch it. Everyone, Stick out your hand. Close your eyes. Imagine you're holding an ice cube. What starts happening to that ice cube? It's melting. That's right. That means it's turning from a solid into a liquid. Okay, everyone, open your eyes. Hmm. Does dry ice melt? No. Does it turn wet like an ice cube? No. That's why it's called dry ice. Now, when you heat up dry ice, it turns from a solid, not into a liquid, but into a... Yeah. Gas. Now, what's it called when something turns from a solid into a gas? Evaporation? No. No, that's from a liquid to a gas. Is it called condensation? No. No, that's from a gas to a liquid. Is it called procrastination? No, I'll tell you what that means tomorrow. <laughs> when a solid turns into a gas, it's called sublimation. Right here, I have one of my oldest pieces of equipment. It's called a film canister. I'm going to put a piece of dry ice in this film canister and it will start to supplement or turn from a solid into a yeah. gas. Even though we can't see it, matter is gas. A matter is anything that takes up space. Now what takes up more space? A solid 
or a gas. A gas. A gas will expand and take up much space as it can. Now when I put the dry ice in the film canister and put the lid on top, what do you think is going to happen? It's time to do our scientific guess, which is also called a hypothesis. Okay, all right, now let's see what happens. Oh, look at that, it's sublimate. Wow. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> I love it. All right, now I'm gonna put the lid on top. Now, oh my God! <laughs> wow, that was awesome! Whoa! Top, we trapped the gas inside. The gas kept expanding, trying to find space, which in turn built up pressure inside of the film canister, which made it pop up into the air. And that's what it looked like when Henry and Bev saw something flying over their heads. They didn't see what flew overhead, but Beth had an idea. Maybe that was the evil eye sorceress. But Henry laughed. That's just an old story people tell to scare their kids. She's not real. Mm. Now what would you do? A. Would you run home? Or B. Would you follow it into the forest? Come on, let's go see what it was. Henry grabbed Beth by the arm and together they ran towards the forest. Meanwhile, high atop the castle tower, someone was watching them. It's those two pesky kids. They're heading into the forest. I'll stop them. The guard raced down the long hall, jumped onto his horse, and rode to the edge of the forest. Right there, far in the distance. Running through the trees, he spotted Henry and Beth. The guards started to chase them. Henry and Beth started to run. They were fast, but the guard's horse was faster. Henry and Beth need our help. Put your hands up and be like the trees in the forest.
He got closer and closer. The hoofbeats got louder and louder. He rode alongside them. Just as he reached out, about to grab them, they dove off the path and disappeared from sight. Hmm? Hmm. He looked right. Then he looked left. The guards saw something, but it wasn't Henry and Beth. It wasn't a person at all. It was a mysterious white cloud of fog. He felt very cold. Something wasn't right. He turned and rode off in the other direction. It was filling the entire forest. Henry and Beth peeked out from behind the old tree they were hiding behind. The guard was gone. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <clears throat> in this story, Henry and Beth saw something in the forest. It was a mysterious white cloud of... Fog. That's right. We're gonna do an experiment to show you what that looked like. Do you remember what it's called when a solid turns into a gas? Sublimation. Right here, I have a graduated cylinder filled with water. I'm going to add dry ice to that water. What do you think's gonna happen? It's time to make our scientific guess, also called a hypothesis. All right, it's time to test out our theory. Let's see what happens. When we put the dry ice into water, the water makes the dry ice heat up and sublimate even faster. That allows us to see all the gas, just like a fog or a cloud. That's right, we can actually, whoa, pour it in our hands. Look at that. Whoa, we can even pour it in our lab coats. I can even pour it on you. And this is what it looked like when Henry and Beth saw the mysterious white fog. The guard was gone, but that's when they saw it. Right there, the fog. It was coming towards them. What would you do? Would you A, stay in the foggy forest? Or would you B, warn the king? Quickly, Henry and Beth ran back towards the castle to warn the king. Henry and Beth ran fast as they could. They saw the castle in the distance. Finally, they made it out of the forest. But they were too late. Right there, standing in front of the castle, they saw her. It was the evil ice sorceress. <laughs> Suddenly, the trumpets blared. The castle gates blew open. And the knights marched out.
but nobody could have known what was going to happen next. The evil eye sorceress stomped her feet. She clapped her hands. She snapped her fingers. With a wave of the hand and flick of the wrist, she released bubbles of fog that rained down from the sky. When the bubbles popped, they released ice cold fog that froze the night solid. The evil ice sorceress stomps her feet. She claps her hands and she snaps her fingers. That's right. When she does, she makes bubbles of fog. We're gonna do an experiment to show you exactly what that looked like. Right here, I have a flask. In my flask is water. Now we're gonna add a chemical to this water. So, we're gonna add a piece of dry ice to the soapy filled water. What do you think's gonna happen? It's time for our scientific guess, also known as a hypothesis. Oh. Okay. All right. Are you ready? Here we go. Now it's time to add the dry ice. Here we go. Whoa! Oh my gosh! Look at that! can see the fog inside of the bubbles. The dry ice supplemented. It turned from a solid into a gas. The gas is filling up the soap. And that's why we're getting so many bubbles. Lots and lots of bubbles. This is really cool. When the bubbles pop, you can see the fog inside of an escape. It's really cool. And this is what it looked like when the evil ice sorceress made bubbles of fog. But it wasn't the knights that she wanted. <laughs> right there, she found who she was looking for. Slowly, she walked towards the king. She stomped her feet. She clapped her hands. She snapped her fingers. And with a wave of the hand and flick of the wrist, she released a giant bubble of fog. The bubble popped releasing an ice-cold fog that froze the king solid. Then, ever so slowly, the evil ice sorceress turned around and looked out into the distance. With a flash of her icy blue eyes, she caught Henry and Beth watching her. They started to run. They arrived at a sign with two locations, fiery mountains or frozen swamp. What would you do? Would you A, run to the fiery mountains or would you B, head to the frozen swamp?
Henry and Beth reached the base of the fiery mountains. There, it was said, the dragons lived. A dragon was Henry and Beth's only hope to stop the evil ice sorceress. They climbed up, up, and up the narrow rocky path, winding their way higher and higher into the mountains. With every step they took, they felt the ground getting warmer beneath their feet. Ow. As they got closer, they saw it was the opening to a cave. What would you do? Would you A, keep climbing, or B, go into the cave? With whatever courage they had left, Henry and Beth stepped inside of the cave. At once they heard a deafening roar. <laughs> they looked up. They couldn't believe their eyes. They were standing face to face with a dragon. Two children in my mountain cave. What are you doing here? Okay, everybody. Henry and Beth needs our help again, okay? On three, yell, the evil ice sorceress is back, okay? You ready? One, two, three. The, the evil ice sorceress is back! My fire should be able to melt her. The dragon flew up in the air. Henry and Beth felt the powerful wind in their face and hair. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! In this story, Henry and Beth flew through the air with the dragon. That's right. While they were flying through the air, they felt how strong the wind was. We're going to do an experiment to show you what that was like. Now, what's all around us that we need to breathe? <sighs> air. Now, is air a solid, a liquid, or a gas? That's right. Air is made out of tiny little particles, too small for us to see. But if we can't see it, how do we know it exists? Because we can feel it. We can also see the effects that it has on other objects. Right here, I have a leaf blower. The leaf blower sucks air through this end and shoots it out at 140 miles an hour. Let's try the leaf blower with this toilet paper. What do you think is going to happen? It's time for us to make our scientific guess, also called a hypothesis. All right, now it's time to test out our theory. Fast 
move the air has lots of energy. When the energy comes into contact with another object, like the toilet paper, it makes the toilet paper fly through the air. And that's what it looked like when Henry and Beth flew through the air with the dragon. Flying through the air, the dragon saw the entire kingdom below. The castle was completely frozen in ice. Right there stood the evil ice sorceress. She was watching. The dragon landed in front of the castle and put Henry and Beth down. I'll be right back. The dragon took a deep breath and released a blast of... Fire! <laughs> Not even fire can melt me. She stomped her feet. She clapped her hands. She snapped her fingers, and with a wave of the hand and a flick of the wrist, she released bubbles of fog that rained down on Henry and Beth. Just when they thought all hope was lost, Henry and Beth heard a sound. The dragon spread its wings wide apart and covered Henry and Beth like a giant umbrella. The bubbles popped, releasing their ice-cold fog that froze the dragon solid. Then the evil eye sorceress rose up into the air and started flying towards them. What would you do? Would you A, face the evil sorceress? Or would you B, find a place to hide? Henry and Beth started to run. Henry and Beth saw an open window in the castle. They jumped inside. Down, down, down to the coal castle cellar. Everything in the cellar was completely frozen in ice, except for one thing, an old wooden barrel. They opened the barrel. It was filled with salt. As they climbed inside the barrel, some salt spilled out onto the ground and it started to melt the ice. Just then, someone kicked the door in. I can see you come out of that barrel. She stomped her feet. She clapped her hands. She snapped her fingers. The evil eye sorceress started to wave her hand. But before the evil eye sorceress could flick her wrist, Henry and Beth had an idea. They reached their hands inside of the barrel, grabbed a handful of salt, and on three, one, two, three, they threw it at her. All at once, the salt began to work. The evil eye sorceress broke out in a cold sweat and she watched as the salt melted through her icy skin. With one final shriek, the evil eye sorceress exploded into millions of tiny water droplets that fell like rain. And just like that, the evil eye sorceress was gone. This time, for good. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <clears throat> In this story, Henry and Beth melted the evil eye sorceress with... So, she exploded into millions of ice droplets. We're gonna do an experiment to show you what that looked like. Okay, everyone, do like this. Okay, do it again. We breathe out CO2 or carbon dioxide. That's the same thing that dry ice is made out of. Dry ice is just the solid form of carbon dioxide. Inside this cartridge is carbon dioxide gas. 
when we open up this end, carbon dioxide escapes very, very fast. I'm gonna attach it to this tube. And what's inside of this tube? Nothing right now. We're gonna put water inside of the tube. We're going to pull this lever and release the carbon dioxide gas. Now, what do you think's gonna happen? It's time for our scientific guess, also called a hypothesis. Are you ready? Let's do it. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. And that's what it looked like when the evil ice sorceress exploded into thousands of little tiny droplets of water. Henry and Beth got right to work. They dragged the barrel outside the castle. Lifted it high over their heads and dumped salt all over the dragon. All they could do now was wait, and wait, and the salt began to melt the ice. The dragon started to move. It flapped its giant wings and flew into the air. Flying over the kingdom, the dragon saw everything still covered in ice. It took a deep breath and released a blast of fire. As the ice melted and the kingdom thawed out, a huge cloud of fog formed over the land. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <clears throat> At the end of the story, the dragon took a deep breath and let out a blast of fire. That's right. The fire melted all the ice and left a big cloud of fog. This is an experiment to show you what that looked like. Right here, I have a bucket filled with hot water. Right here, I have dry ice. What do you think is going to happen when I put the dry ice inside of the bucket of hot water? It's time to make our scientific guess, also called a hypothesis. I almost said the word hypothesis. Oh! Wow! Okay, are you guys ready? I need your help counting down. The ice is sublimating very fast because it's in hot water. Oh, this is awesome! Whoa, 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 whoa! It's sublimating at such a high rate. And 
That's exactly what it looked like when the kingdom started to thaw out again. The dragon waved goodbye to Henry and Beth and headed back to her home in the mountains. Everything returned to normal. Suddenly, someone called for Henry and Beth. It was the king. Then they remembered that they were in trouble for sneaking around the castle. The king called for them again. This time, there was nowhere to hide. Henry, Beth, I've been looking everywhere for you. Because of what you did, our kingdom is safe. All hail Henry and Beth, and your dragon friend too. And from now on, you are allowed to sneak around the castle whenever you'd like. And that concludes Dragons, Return of the Ice Sorcerers. Did you have a good time? <laughs>